bring you a humble Merlin event. Cast vicariously as both victim and villain by the vicissitudes of fate. This facade, no mere veneer of vanity, is a vestige of the Vox Populum, now vacant. However, this valorous visitation of a bygone vexation stands vivified and is about to vanquish the vile and venal and vermin vanguarding vice and about saving the vile and avaricious violation of ocean. <laughs> Only verdict is vengeance. Of any dead, hell is devoted, not in vain, for the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous. <laughs> Verily, this vicious wiles of verbiage may respond to reverse. Allow me simply to say that it is my very good honor to meet you and that you may call me V. Greetings and salutations, YouTube. It's Kiora here, as usual. Yeah, 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 you know how it goes. And today I'm going to talk about something I said I'd talk about, but I never got around to talking about because I'm a lazy whore. Except I'm not a whore, and I generally tend not to be lazy. But that's just me defending myself from someone who would want to quote mine me. Isn't that right? Because we all know that's all creationists can do. Quote mine! But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments recently. Okay, I haven't. But, uh... One of the things I said I was going to talk about was how to falsify evolution. I said I would, and now it's time for me to tell you how to do it. So pay close attention, because we're only going through this once. So it's a question many have asked, but, well, probably many have answered. But it comes down to, what do you need to falsify evolution? Well, there are a few things, but in order to falsify evolution, you first need to know what evolution actually is. Evolution is the variation of species from one kind to another. In other words, it is merely descent with modification. Everything that ever was is just a descendant out of whatever its parents were. You are still a human who is still an ape, who is still a monkey, who is still a mammal, who is still a reptile, who is still an amphibian, who is still a fish, who is still a single cell thing. Get the get picture? Anyway, um, so knowing this, we know that life diverges on paths and trees, and it's not the changes. It's not the changes that we look for. It's the pattern that emerges when we look at those changes. In other words, say, for instance, uh, hmm, you find a bird with nipples. Now, if that bird didn't recently evolve, it's probably not going to have them. Because if it had nipples, then it would fly in the face of evolution. By God, that would be evidence that some almighty deity was making things. Hmm. But everything conforms to this pattern. And so far, the pattern has yet to be violated. Another way to do it is to find something uncharacteristically complex. Way, 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 way back when and place it in today. In simpler words, if you find a Cambrian bunny rabbit, a fully developed Cambrian bunny rabbit, then obviously something went wrong with the evolutionary process, because you can't have a modern-day bunny back in the pre-Cambrian era, or the Cambrian era, because they weren't around back then, and all sorts of the various things they had didn't evolve. So, Precambrian bunnies, finding a bird with nipples, or basically finding anything that violates the pattern. For example, finding an insect that has plant cells in it. You find that, and then suddenly you have proof for something other than evolution. Is it creationism? I don't know. But yes, evolution is falsifiable, so stop saying it isn't. Alright, I gotta go. These gloves are around for a reason. Peace, love, and inevitable flowers. Mwah.